Actually, I feel like playing this game some more, so I'm gonna... What the fuck, Hermione? Did you flip someone off or throw up a gang sign? What was that? But yeah, rather than this episode showing off continuous footage of one part of the game's storyline, I just have a bunch of random clips I'm going to exhibit here. Most of the time while I kept playing, I was just running around aimlessly, but there were some weird moments that I came across. Like this one right here. I can just jump on the railing, fall off, and they'll keep following in order to stay close to me. <laughs> yeah. Now I had all kinds of fun with the students that are just standing around but have no more cards to sell. You can just bump into them and they flinch and move a little out of the way. No big deal. But you can do this repeatedly and get them to move anywhere. Uh... What the fuck? Yeah, that'll happen sometimes. It's entertaining, sure, but if you have a place in mind that you're trying to move them towards, it'll mess you up pretty badly. I want to get this guy down the stairs and he's not cooperating. Come on! This might take a while. Well, at least now I've got him on the stairs. I'm not even sure where I want to take this guy. Although, once he's past the railing, he might just go somewhere on his own. Okay, he's been freed from the stairs. Where's he going? Stop. Stop. Stop! Where, what are you doing? Wow, he actually did stop. I'd love to know what would be going through Ron and Hermione's heads right now. Okay, trying to go forward now. Ron, don't interfere! Jeez. Let's see, what to do with this guy? Maybe I can get him to walk into the dungeons. I understand that these NPCs will move out of the way when you bump into them, but I really don't understand the walking in place or the walking backwards that they sometimes do. And I'm simply trying to bump him from behind to make him go forward, but he keeps bending over like he wants to grind me. Shit, he's in the doorway again. Oh, fuck, no! Get out of the corner! Okay, he's out. No, damn it! Alright, ah, uh, shit, okay. Alright, he's out again. At least he doesn't permanently get stuck in that corner, I was worried about that for a minute. Come on. But, you know what? I'm not sure this endeavor is really worth the time and energy I'm putting into this. This dude almost looks like Milo Yiannopoulos with Donald Trump's hair. Almost. Okay, now I have a different goal in mind. I want to see if I can launch this guy if he walks onto a Spongify tile after I cast on it. It probably won't work. I've never seen that happen to Ron or Hermione or any other NPC. But they're probably programmed to just walk around it if they're behaving normally. But this, on the other hand, is not normal. So... we'll see. He's sort of already aligned with the tile. Almost. Oh, there he goes. Oh god, stop. No, don't walk past it. Shit, 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 Okay. Good. Now, get on the tile and fly away. Damn it! Fuck. Can't reach him now. If I walk towards the door, the game will load the grounds map and teleport me there instead. Yeah, just like that. And in the process, it unloads the previous area that we were in, so all the NPCs were reset. See? He's gone. He'll just be back up there in the hallway again. Although, that's a completely different guy now. Alright, I have a new experiment. I want to shove one of these guys into one of the portrait shortcut doors. Since all these shortcuts lead to different areas on the same map, the game shouldn't reset any of the NPC positions since it won't unload this whole area from memory. It really should only take a few more seconds to get him around the corner. In the meantime, in case you haven't noticed a pattern yet, this is how you move these guys around. The red arrows represent how you're approaching the NPC, and the blue arrows with the same number represent the resulting movement the NPC will make. Just watch for a few seconds.
You'll notice how the NPC always moves away from you, but along a perpendicular axis. Alright, let's see now. Yes! Got him! Alright. Well, the excitement from that success wore off pretty quickly. But like I said, we're in the same map area, so he should still be there. Yeah, he's there. He just doesn't go to the other end of the shortcut like we do. I want to see what I can do with the stairs now. Okay, she should come up with us. Yep, she's practically on the edge, though. I wonder if I can kick her off. Nope, that didn't work. Okay, let's try something else. Damn it, Hermione! Oh, God. Apparently Ron and Hermione can push the NPCs around, too. Not just blocking their movements. Well, now that student is even further up the stairs. Yeah, Hermione pushed her up again. I suppose you could use your two friends to push around the NPCs as well, but that would be pretty difficult. And since Ron and Hermione move on their own a lot anyways, their behavior would be somewhat unpredictable, and I just wouldn't recommend it. Just try your best to keep them out of the way. Just another NPC behind the portrait. Although I'm not sure how I got her so deep in there. I can't even get close to her now, so I couldn't have pushed her that far since the game sends you into the central portrait hub after you walk over some imaginary line. So she must have walked a little ways as well. Now this right here is just weird. I guess for some reason there are collision boxes above most of the desks. I'm not sure why though. The only time the desks are ever used in this room is when McGonagall is lecturing her transfiguration class at the beginning of the Draconophores Lapophores lesson. Wait, hang on a second. Yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> but anyways, the desks are never used except for that cutscene at the beginning of the challenge, and it's one of the few times where the characters are in a seated position. So I wonder if the fact that this room is a place where, for the cutscene at least, the 3D models for the students have to change shape into a sitting position has anything to do with this. I'm not sure why it would result in this effect later on if you just casually walk in here, but I can't think of any other reason this area would be so different from any other aside from the fact that the game forces the characters in the sitting position. We can further test this idea though, there are two additional classrooms to explore after all. Even the spaces between the desks are like this, where there's an invisible ceiling with collision detection right underneath you. And I'm not sure why this desk in the back row doesn't have the same issue that the other desks have. Let's start the teacher's desk. Well, no issue between the desk and chair. And I can stand on empty air here. I guess the teacher's desk is normal. Yeah, it's the same here, too. So it's not just a random glitch in the Transfiguration classroom, there's something about most of these desks that causes this glitch. I still suspect it has something to do with the fact that students sit here during cutscenes, but I can't figure out why that would matter. It's Merely a correlation at this point. And speaking of these desks, there's only nine of them? What the fuck kind of classroom has nine places for students to sit? The Transfiguration classroom wasn't much better, but I think it had a little more than a dozen. I mean, seriously, what the fuck? Now there's the Charms classroom that's left, but that has long benches or something, not desks. So, we'll see what happens. Oh. 
Okay, so I guess it has nothing to do with sitting, it's just a problem with the desk 3D model itself. I decided to replay this lesson because while looking over the footage for episode 4, I noticed this hole that opens up where all the suits of armor were that I apparently didn't notice while playing through this the first time. Nobody's watching you, Hermione. Don't act so cautious. I have like 8 subscribers anyways. Wait, that chest is already open, but I haven't been down here yet. Oh, for fuck's sake. I replay this challenge to look down here and all I get are a bunch of imps. I was hoping for a more pleasant surprise, not an empty chest and more enemies to deal with. Yeah, come on, get on with it. Your aim sucks, but I can hit two of you with one cracker while an object blocks the in-game camera. There isn't even anything hidden in the plants, either. Disappointing. These pumpkins don't even burst open and give me a pumpkin pasty after all this? Fucking hell. I guess while I'm at it, I'll go through the other two challenges and see what weird stuff I can try. MSI Afterburner's pre-record feature is handy, but whenever I switch from pre-record to record, the video freezes for a second or two. It's pretty annoying. Sorry about it. Well, here we are in the Glacius Challenge, and speaking of freezing, you'll know exactly when I hit the button to switch from pre-record mode to normal recording mode. But in the meantime, I figured I would just jump off the slides. Yeah, right there. The whole thing freezes for a couple of seconds. I love MSI Afterburner, but that's some shit. Although I'm not sure when I last updated this software, to be fair. They may have fixed it, for all I know. Assuming it can be fixed. Well, I flung myself out pretty far that time. I'm not even sure what I'm trying to accomplish here. Oh, come on, I actually landed on that. Nice. Again, same shit. I landed on it, didn't I? Yep, just some more sliding around. Oh, I gotta see if I can land right on that lower portion of the slide from the second jump. Why do I keep getting sent back this far? I think I'll get those pumpkins. Oh, what the hell? Great, now I can't go back. What? How the fuck did I get launched like that? I accelerated from one mile an hour to like 30 in an instant. That's bullshit. I can't even imagine how the in-game physics would have allowed something like that to happen. Alright. Oh, come on! I would have landed back on the actual slide that time. I'm sure I said it once already, but it's always important to check the banners that hang from above. I'm not sure how they store anything inside them, but whatever. For me, banners are one of the things I constantly forget to check for items. Fuck, I forgot to freeze that... thing. What is it, anyways? A fire pit? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, it dropped some beans. Well, how was it still storing beans if I had to open it once already to reach this chest, though? Whoa. Steady. Steady. Watch yourself. Come on. What the fuck? What's with the shadows on his face, especially when he talks? Right, Professor. Thanks. Finally! We've been waiting for you! Shut the fuck up. No one forced you to spend your time standing there. I want to return to this theme of the game being quite easy and the developers being overly cautious with chocolate frogs and such. I want to see how long it takes for three pixies to kill me. This feels so wrong standing here. It just goes against every instinct you have as a player to dodge and fight back. Oh, 
and physically touching them doesn't harm you either, so we're not following Super Mario Bros. rules where you die instantly if you touch a turtle. Quit taunting me and get it over with. It took them a little more than half a minute to kill me simply by standing still. Fucking weaklings. And what's the point of having chocolate frogs if you have an unlimited number of lives anyways? It didn't even send me back very far. Okay, so this is a series of failed experiments where I try to slingshot myself from one Carpe Retractum statue to another without landing on any platforms. And I'm having a horrible time with it. It feels like it should be able to work, but I just can't get it right. Damn, landed on the platform by accident. I wanted to see if suspending myself as a starting point would make any difference. Come on, hurry up. Of course, I failed there too. My main problem here is that I keep casting on the first statue again, no matter how certain I am that I otherwise aimed my mouse cursor properly on the second statue. I guess this isn't going to work. While I was at it, I did this part again. And the fire crab still reset itself into an upright position after the first hit. As far as I know, it's the only fire crab in the game that does that, aside from those few in the final exam. How the fuck did I mess that up? Are you serious? Apparently clicking the right mouse button again in the middle of a Carpe Retractum spell cancels all your momentum. That must be why I couldn't cast myself from one Carpe Retractum statue to another earlier. I'm gonna try cutting the spell short again. I don't believe it! Okay, I'm just messing around here. How the fuck did you two follow me up here? That shouldn't even be possible, right? I just figured Ron and Hermione couldn't use Spongify tiles unless they were being controlled by the player. Well, see ya. I'm out of here. Goodbye. What are those footsteps? Are you shitting me? I know you can't apparate yet anywhere, let alone in or around the castle. You're just fucking with me now. Get away. You're really just gonna run after me down there? I guess they gave up. There must have been a glitch. I'm not sure how else they could get up here. Well, even this episode needs to end. What better place than at the ground's exit? What happens if I try to sneak past? Well then, need another look at that achievements list? Here you go. Well, that was fucking embarrassing.